Hey there everyone, Hatayshi here and welcome to the MongoDB series. I hope you are enjoying the series. If you are enjoying the series, do let me know. What is the way to let me know? Yep, that comment section. And surely share this video so that you can let other people know that you are learning cool stuff and this series is pretty cool. Now let's move forward into the series and there are a couple of essential components in the series that we have to talk and there is no skip from that. So I'm going to open up my browser. I highly recommend you to do so along with me. That's by the way, a very beautiful location. And of course, Moraine Lake, Canada. I watch a lot of Peter McKinnon videos, so it's it's there. So we're going to just open up open uh, weather map API. Uh, I wanted to show you some cool stuff here. So open up this open weather map API. Just click on that and uh, make sure you're on the slash API. Just look at any API docs. We really don't care about exactly what API is. What I want you to do is go up here onto the by city and just click on anywhere here. I really don't care if you click on London, UK or any of that. Just, just click on any of that. All I'm interested in, in this is this data. Now this data is not readable right now, but you might have guessed that it is almost something exactly same that we are usually uh, seeing on our command prompt that gets back from the MongoDB shell. Now we're going to go on to my one of my favorite website, which is JSON Formatter, and we're going to just paste everything here, and we're going to click on Format and Beautify. Okay. Now let's come up onto the interesting part here. So in this part, what we can see that this is obviously an object, but notice very closely here that some of these key value pairs in this the key is and a key is a simple variable, I can call that. And uh, the value is actually an array. So can we do that? Can we structure our data in such a manner that the value of a key can be an array? Now, not just only this one, furthermore, if you'll drill down, look at this main here. Now, this is further an object. So technically, this is also an object and this is also an object. So we have two situations here, surely something like uh, very base like uh, this base and stations this is a key value pair we have already seen that how we can go with that but there are two issues in front of us first is can the key can be a simple key and the value can be an array and can the value be an object so we are going to take down these two situation in the upcoming videos and in fact in this one as well uh, let's try with the values in this one which is objects and in the next one we're going to take down these arrays as well and for that we are going to need something we are going to need the exercise files so go to learncodeonline.in slash mongodb exercise files are all freely available for all of you lovely people and uh, now i can actually close that we don't need that here and i need to fire up my uh, vs code from the other screen it's too much big and there we go. Now, what I want you to do is open up MongoDB exercise file. Remember, we have two files, student v2, which we are recently using. And we also have student JSON, which is our very first file. In this one, we are going to use the first one. So let's just go ahead and drag and drop. It has just two values here. So what I want you to do is simply go ahead and copy all of them. Yep, I want you to copy all of them. Okay, now let's clean up the database. Make sure you don't have anything up here. Now, so far, the database that we have been using is the student's database. Now, I want you to create another database. The reason for creating this another database is quickly you will get a reminder of what we have done so far in the series, as well as our data, which is going to be useful in the later videos quite a lot, just remains intact. We don't touch that. Okay, so we're going to say use and we're going to call this as old students. There we go and uh, make sure you call that exactly old students. Now it is switched to old students. Now, obviously, uh, it doesn't have any data here. So we want to insert something into that. So we're going to say db dot. And we're going to call this as again, student uh, data, uh, we can call it anything what we like, but I'm going to just stick to uh, db dot student data. Now how we can insert many, we can just call insert many. Uh, there we go. But as I told you, just remove the last parenthesis, paste the entire stuff, and then just close this guy here and hit enter. It says acknowledge true. Two object IDs are inserted. See how quickly we can do that now uh, compared to the previous time. Now let's also see that what is there inside the database. Uh, nope, I don't want this command. I want to run another command, which is db dot student data. Remember, we are in the old student database. And we're going to just run a command find 
obviously I want to use a pretty here. There we go. Okay, so this database is pretty raw and pretty very simple. I would say that everything is a key value pair. There's nothing like there is some key whose value is further an object. So how we can do that? In order to do so, we have already learned a couple of commands, which is like how we can update the existing database and their units. Uh, we're gonna use that now. So uh, updating anything is pretty easy. We're gonna call this as db.studentData. Remember we learned that. And we are gonna use update many. Surely we can use update one. You know the difference between them now, so there's no big deal. There we go, and remember we have got two objects to be passed on. One is the criteria and another one is what you really want to update. Now, as of now, I don't have any criteria, but uh, in case you want to update just one, you can uh, put anything like name should be Hitesh or name should be Mark, whatever you like. I just want to some reason, I want to update all of that. We are gonna be updating it just somewhat little bit inspired from YouTube. If you remember, YouTube store all the thumbnails in multiple sizes. All the uh, thumbnails that you post on the, or you see on the YouTube videos are stored in small, medium, and large thumbnails. If you have any time access the YouTube APIs or you might have just seen them. Okay, so I want to update all the fields or all the collection in my database. I simply want to do that. And you also know how we can update that. We have to use an atomic operator of dollar set. And then in this dollar set, we have to pass on an object. Now, very closely pay attention how I'm writing these pair of parentheses. It is about to get messy, okay? So I first used update many, two pair of parentheses, uh, just first one for the criteria, second one here. Now I have got dollar underscore set whose value is also further down an object, okay? Just pay close attention here. Now, what I want the, inside this one, I surely can do something like this. I can say uh, something like this, profile pick, and profile pick whose value can be uh, something dot jpg. This is going to update like a regular key value pair. But what we want to do is not the regular key value pair. We want to have something, a key whose value is further down an object. So we are gonna remove that and Instead of that, we are gonna put this as an object again. So one more pair of curly braces. Okay, now here, what we want to do, just like YouTube, we want to save our thumbnails into multiple dimensions. So we're gonna call this as small. Small is going to have a value of, I'm just just being uh, trying to replicate that. It is value is 50 by 50 JPEG. Now, this is not an ideal way of storing the different sizes of images, but let's just say, let's just say there is a thumbnail here and whose value is small. And then we are gonna store a medium one too, whose value is 100. And there is gonna be a large whose value is gonna be, let's just say 200. Now, the reason why I called you pay special attention because when you move on to the next line, too many of brackets and matching all of them can be a little bit tricky. Again, just follow, repeat the video. The best part about the videos is you can repeat them. So there we go, now we have learned that. Now I'm gonna hit enter, and there we go, acknowledge true. Most important thing now is that how it is being displayed. So thank goodness we have a pretty here so that we can take a look on that. So I'm gonna clean the screen now, control L is the shortcut or clear is the shortcut, and I want to find all of that using pretty. Now notice very closely here what is happening in this one here. Now, so far we have been seeing this is verified, which is true, or course count is four. Now this profile pick is further down an object. In the object, we have got small, whose value is key. And by the way, the value can be anything. You, I hope that's not an issue right now. I've just used a number here. Uh, you can use strings or any other thing that you would like to insert here. That's totally fine. Okay. So we have learned how we can insert and modify our data structure, something like this. But the big issue is, how we can access that. Obviously, let's just say you want to access something like only the medium size of the thumbnail, how you can do that. Now, finding that is also really, really simple. In this particular case, it's going to return us both the values because uh, let's just say we put a filter of, give me a medium of 100. It's gonna give us both because it's same. Uh, so, but exactly, you will get uh, the point that how this is being done. So what we can do is uh, we're gonna say db.studentData 
and inside that we simply want to find all the things which are matching okay so what are the criteria that we want to put up now previously we were putting up the criteria like something uh, give me all the things which has a name of uh, my name Hitaish and we hit enter and it gives us okay uh, we got some error here okay db.studentdata.find and uh, yep we forgot to pass on a curly braces here my bad there we go and it gives me an object ID so this is how exactly you find up all the things but now we want to find something really which is one step deep into that so how we can do that uh, instead of saying that we want to find something which is uh, name equals Hitesh, uh, we don't want to do that. We want to something different here. We want to say that, remove all of this, make sure there is a curly braces here. We want to find, uh, I need to prettify that, <laughs> sorry about that. I actually forgot what is there in my database. Profile pick. Profile pick and inside that med. In case I'll ask you in general that how you can access this med, it is pretty simple. You just have to say profile pick dot med. And that's how you're going to find the medium one. Exactly same as the query. So what we do is uh, we just remove this guy here. But there is one small caution. Just pay attention there. So we can simply say profile pick dot med. And whose value is actually 100. So that's all you simply can put up here. The only word of caution here is that when you're putting up something like a profile pick dot med, when there is a dot or maybe there is a space between them, then we simply have to use the double quotes here. It's pretty simple, pretty standardized stuff. Okay, there we go. Once I hit enter, obviously it's going to return me both the values here. Uh, but you got the point that how you can access these nested data. If I would have further nested down uh, something data, like um, maybe you have versions of these profile picks. So profile pick dot med, and there are five versions in that named precisely one, two, three, and four and five. Then surely I can deep dive into that and something like uh, five, I can print up that. I hope you are understanding the gist of what I'm trying to say here. It's pretty easy. You can drill down just using the dot notation. So pretty simple, pretty standard stuff. Okay. So that's all what I wanted to show you uh, in this one, but there is a quick assignment for you. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to update this large as right now it is 200 in both of them. I want you to update the large in this one, which is name Hitesh, and I want you to update with a pretty big one. I want you to exactly 500 there. And then I want you to write a query which can access the all the objects among all the objects which has a large value equals 500 and that should return only one because I don't want you to update the entire things here I want you to update just this one which is having a name of Hitesh I hope you have understood it properly I want all of you who are watching the videos all of you to post down in the comment section and write this exact uh, solution for this one there's going to be just two queries just write them I want to see all of that so that's it for this video. I hope you're enjoying the series and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's catch you up in the next one.